we're here with Joshua Williamson to talk about his new book from Image, launching in May, Nailbiter. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Nailbiter cover, oh, yeah. number so, one. Uh, what happened was, so Mike and I, we kept going back and forth what we wanted to do with the cover. We really wanted something that was going to stand out, and I knew I wanted something simple image. We kept going back and forth on it, nothing was working, we kept doing this stuff. And so finally Mike made that cover, he just wanted, and, and he was way blayer and way grosser than I thought it was going to be. But I was like, this is awesome. Uh, and I showed the image, I started showing it to friends of mine, and everyone was like, that is horrible, you cannot use that as a cover. But you can't, and I was at a basketball game with uh, James Lucas Jones, the editor of uh, Oni, and I showed it to him, and he was like, oh God, you can't do that. And then, <laughs> then he was like, what? You know, I, it'll get people's attention. And so we actually did a new cover. We weren't gonna use that cover. So we were in the middle of it, and the colorist didn't make it in time, Raymond Jackson. Yeah. So they had to run the bloody cover, right? The, the fingernail biting cover. And I was really worried because a friend of mine was like, he felt like it was giving the wrong tone for the book and all this kind of stuff. Um, but so right before I go on stage, uh, Kirkman walks up to me and says, I just want to tell you I love that, that cover. Like, that cover is great, I love it. And I was like, really, we're gonna change it? He's like, what are you, an idiot? <laughs> Don't do that, no. And so when I started talking about it, he's like, no, 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 here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go out there, you're gonna give your presentation, you're gonna show the cover listen to the audience and you'll see all right cool so I go out there and you know I give the spiel and I did the whole like the hard sell of the idea of serial killers and then I said and that's when I made nail biter and then you know they click it and the cover goes up this humongous screen yeah. just boom and the audience heard us like you know like all these like gaps and yeah. shit and all this stuff and I was like well you introduce nail biter for the uninitiated okay, cool. yeah uh, so nail biter is a book uh, about a small town in Buckaroo Oregon who are 16 of the world's worst serial killers while born and raised. Um, and what happens is this guy, he was investigating the last one, the very last of these 16 serial killers, Edward Charles Warren, uh, who's, who's the nail biter, uh, who would kidnap people who chewed their nails and then uh, chew them for him, them. And then when they were done, he would kill them. Uh, and so he got arrested by this FBI agent. And when that happened, it was a huge case. And all of a sudden, like people started figuring it out. They're like, oh. You know, there's um, 16 killers are all in this small town over a 40 year time span. Mm -hmm. This was the worst of them, but this really started bringing this about. People started realizing it. Uh, and this FBI agent goes to the small town to try to figure out why this town. Um, I got the idea because I was uh, the art director, and this woman that I worked with, she would, you know, she had this boyfriend, they were in love, whatever. Um, and she always talked about they were having this great relationship. Well, one day she came into work and she said, uh, well, I broke up with him and she was upset about it. I said, What happened? She said that uh, she found out that his uncle was a serial killer. Like, he had just been arrested as a serial killer. Like, it's just happened. And like, he had strangled and murdered five women. And she's like, I was like, Well, but did your boyfriend know? She's like, No. I'm like, well, did he have anything to do with it? Or, like, you know, she's like, No, nothing. And I said, Well, what's the problem? Like, I mean, like, that sucks for him too, you know? And she's like, Well, I can't be with somebody. Who is that close to something that's so evil? And I always started thinking about how, you know, we talk a lot about the victims and the victims' families, but the families of the killers are also victims, you know? I mean, if you, if someone you love, you found out they were a serial killer, that would be traumatic for you. And there's a part of you that would start thinking, did I not see something? Am I responsible? Did I do something? Who's if you're a parent, you know? Yeah. I think a lot about Jeffrey Dahmer and his parents and his dad and the, and the mom. They, they kind of play the playing game back and forth. And the people who went to high school, they all are like, did we contribute in some way to what became Jeffrey Dahmer? Uh, I think that's a very powerful thing to think about. You know, with Twin Peaks, um, Twin Peaks is about, you know, Laura Palmer's death has a ripple effect on this small town, right? Uh, and you see how she affected so many of her lives. Even when they know her directly, it kind of spins out of that. It's a catalyst that creates the situations. With this, I wanted to do that, but instead of being the victim that does that, it's the killer that does that. You know, this small town, at some point in the last 40 years, it, 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 there were 16 serial killers in a small town. Like, everyone there is either related to, new, dated, like, something, right? Um, and so it, it affects them, and it affects this dynamic of this town, and also the spotlight is shine on this town. One point, they thought the Zodiac lived in Riverside, California, which is where I grew up. And so, I was like, that's really crazy because I was in the 80s and I remember in the 80s there were two different serial killers 
uh, rating that got arrested in the 80s. Was that so crazy? Three serial killers were operating in this town at the same time, and no one knew about it. And then I start being like, that's so crazy. Like, how and why the small town that I lived in gave there were three serial killers from there. And I thought, oh, okay. Now I'm going. And I was living in a super small town in Oregon, and I would uh, ride my bike a lot. Yeah. And I would see weird things. You see stuff. You go out. You kind of go out on the trail a little bit, and you see those houses out in the middle of nowhere. You know, that look like the Texas Chainsaw House. Yeah. And it's like this stuff is all around us all the time, and we don't really pay attention to it. And so that's where I started to develop the book. And, and really, yeah, Buckaroo became a really important part. I mean, this first arc, um, this book's going to be interesting because it's, it's really slow-paced. Mm. It's very much like Twin Peaks or True Detective. It's much more about the characters. And, and so it's really slow, but uh, it's a slow burn, and I hope people will, will, will hang around. So in small towns, like I grew up in a small town too, oh, okay, and yeah. everyone is kind of so invested in everyone Life. Business, yeah. And everyone, again, you get to a small town, everyone's into each other's business. Yeah. You know, like everyone wants to know what's going on. Um, that's more of the second arc. We're going to be doing this first arc again. We're focusing on uh, the overall mystery. Like, I want to build the world first and then start building around it. Yeah. But it is like that because there's going to be an issue, I think it's seven and eight, uh, where there's this bus driver who has been driving around uh, for the last 30 years. And in that time span, like, a ton of those kids that he would drive to school grew up to become serial killers. And so he has this moment where he's, you know, on the bus and he sees the kids get on and they're all happy, smiling kids. And he's just like, the parents are doing it. The parents of the school are doing something. They're doing something these kids are making through this. And he gets this idea, like, I'm going to kidnap this entire bus full of kids to try to, like, save them. Save them from their parents and the school while it's yeah. happening. But of course, he doesn't realize, like, kidnapping a bus full of kids, like, you're going to fuck them up. Well, I think a lot about nature and nurture. Um, you know, people want... People want to believe that it's uh, nurture. They don't want to believe it's nature because nature means it's something inherently fucked up about that person. Yeah. If it's nurture, you can fix it. You can take care of it. You can you can move things around. You can you can raise that kid better. You can surround that kid with more love. But more than likely, we've seen that it's nature. That people are supposed to be born with something. Uh, and I want to explore that idea a little bit. Like I personally believe that it's nature, but, um, you know, I want to show both sides. I don't want it to be scoopily biased. I want to show that, you know, you can argue both ways. And is that kind of, would that be the theme of the book? Is that fair to say? That is a big theme of it, yeah. yeah. Like, what what, may, what like, takes somebody down that path, I think, and, and, and you as a person, like, we're all kind of, this is going to sound weird, we're all kind of violent, you know, like, no matter what, we all have that limit of the side of us. Yeah. And I want to, like, show that and show that idea of, like, you know what takes you from this stage to this stage. I'm always curious when I meet other creators about like the generate, like the genesis of an idea, right? Like the process of what got you here and here. Um, and I think that that same thing you can think about with most any profession in life, but also killers. Like, what moment made them be like, I'm going to do this and it's okay. Yeah, you know, and it doesn't like, bother them anymore. Yeah, like what? Yeah, it's so crazy. Like, and what? And not just that, but like to the extent of that it goes sometimes. You know. People are like keeping the trophies there, you know. What what's going on that makes you go like the initial genesis of this thought? I'm going to kill this person. I'm going to do this with their body, you know. Like, and then what, what if they're good at it? What if they're good at it? Yeah. Small towns aren't very trusting of outsiders, so bringing an outsider in yep. adds so much That's to it. That's issue too. Okay. There's a whole scene about that because there's a guy eating a he's at the diner and he's eating a steak and he says like. You know, this is like the best thing I've had in a long time, and I'm freaked out right now because I don't know if one of you psychos like cook somebody and this is them, right? <laughs> and the sheriff is like, don't talk about that. Like, don't even talk about that. Like, we already in the town have that problem. Outsiders like accuse us of that. It pisses people off. So like, don't talk about it. Yeah, there's a whole thing where he uh, there's a scene issue one where he uh, Finch is chewing his nails, and this other girl who's like a teenager in the town, sort of a troublemaker, about uh, name Alice. She comes over and like tells him like, stop chewing your nails. He's like, well, he's like, he puts it together, like, oh, well, yeah, even if it's chewing your nails in that town makes people nervous. Like, they see it and they get, like, like, it makes them just nervous, you know? So it's like, yeah. So the nail biter is like a very distinct type of killer. Yeah. Are you dealing with those types of things with other killers as well? All of them. All yeah. of the gimmick, yeah. Issue, two, awesome. issue one, we really only deal with him. Issue two, I show, I think, four different killers. Like, I, we started, like, doubling up in that issue. We, we explore and we explain, like, this killer does this, this killer does that, and sort of explain a little bit, and then start to 
delve into that a little bit later on with the book. But yeah, we, Mike and I, we thought it was going to be really easy. We thought, like, let's make up 16 show killers that are completely unique and have weird MOs. Let's do that. And then the day we set up to do it, it was like, dude, I'm fucking out. I don't know. I don't know what to do. <laughs> they don't want to do, I don't want to copy other people's MOs. But yeah. We didn't want to have things that doubled up on each other. We wanted to make sure that everyone had their own thing. And there is a code, like, one of the things that, that will start coming around is that even though the only connection they can find from them is that they, some of them knew each other when they were young, they were missing from the town, yeah. they can't find their, like, actual connections. But they start realizing there is a code going on. And there is one, uh, give us some ways, like, way out the line, but there is one, there is one who doesn't follow the code, but he's not, uh, Warren, he's not the nail -bucker. I did so much research for this, it was so depressing. I like, would imagine. You know, like, dude, I was reading the encyclopedias and all these different books about it, and it was, God, man, so... Because it always ends up being so... That was one thing about the Citadel Killer. We almost made them, like, Batman Rogues Gallery in a way. Yeah. Where, like, everyone has a gimmick, you know? Uh, we we didn't want it to be this simple, just a guy, just a white dude who wants to murder people. Like, we didn't want to be so simple and as thin as, as, as ugly. Um, but that's the reality of, of that world. So we were trying to, like, balance those two things, you know? Uh, my girlfriend, she works for... Uh, she works for the parole office. So all day long she sees criminal moral people and, and she was the one that was just like like the whole thing about the nature of nurture she was the first person to really point that out to me she's like people want nurture because they want there to be an answer yeah. and she was like yeah at the end of the day most of these horrible criminals these horrible things that are happening are actually in a weird way mundane if you enjoyed this interview make sure to pre-order your copy of nail butter number one now